I went to a progressive Christian university and honestly, I don't regret it. That might surprise you, especially if you've been watching the channel for a long time. You know that my theological leanings tend to be more conservative. So why, Isaac, would you say that the progressive Christian university was a good experience? Well, it might not be why you think. But let me just explain a little bit. To be honest, when I first went to the university, I wasn't totally sure uh, where they stood theologically. I know it was a little bit more liberal. I didn't really comprehend how theologically progressive they were until I got into the bowels of the university. What I began to experience was a pretty much complete disregard for the authority of scripture, the complete acceptance of every LGBTQ plus lifestyle, um, uh, the fact that evolution was just true and it didn't need to really be discussed at all. Most people, it seemed, were also pro-choice and believed that climate change was a very significant issue that needed to be addressed by us. Now, these concepts probably don't surprise you. They're hallmarks of progressivism or wokeism. And so this was the environment that I was thrust into after being homeschooled my whole life. Now, maybe you're thinking, oh, Isaac, that must have been a real shock for you being homeschooled and sheltered and all that. And actually, no, this is one of the reasons I love homeschooling is because I was involved in and uh, exposed to a lot of different worldviews early on in my life. Uh, progressive worldviews, I understood what they believed. A uh, big factor of that was YouTube, a big factor of that was watching people like, you know, Todd Friel with Wretched Radio, or Ray Comfort Living Waters, or Jeff Durbin um, with Apologia Studios, Apologia Church. Folks like that were my inspiration and they got, they helped me learn, okay, this is what these other folks are believing. But this unique environment actually pushed me in a way that I wasn't expecting. It pushed me to get serious about what I believed really, really quickly. Thankfully, the training of homeschooling really prepared me for that. But I had to take this next step of saying, okay, my Christian faith is constantly under attack. Pretty much everything that I've taken for granted up until this point is now seen as, you know, a fairy tale as false or as at least not authoritative. We'll get back to the video in a second, but first I want to share something with you. VPNs can be very useful and I recommend the one that I use, Private Internet Access. They're sponsoring this video. A VPN encrypts your web traffic and hides your IP address. Without a VPN, your internet service provider, network administrator, and potentially your government, depending on where you live, can see and record the websites you visit. Using the internet without private internet access is like letting somebody peek in on your post-it notes. They know your to-do list. With private internet access, none of that can happen. So your digital life is safer and more private. Now, I've always wanted to watch The Great British Baking Show, but it's not available on Canadian Netflix. Netflix. Now with private internet access, I can log into US Netflix and my fiance and I can watch people struggle to make souffles all day. When you connect your device to a VPN, you can choose which country it appears in. And with private internet access, you can choose from 84 countries in every single US state. Now they also have a new feature where you can have protection on an unlimited amount of devices on one subscription. Private internet access is available on all platforms, Windows, Mac, Android, and many Many, many more. The reason I feel so comfortable promoting private internet access is that they are the most transparent VPN provider. With over 30 million downloads, they never store or record data. Now I have a special offer for you. By using my link in the description, you can get an 83% discount on private internet access. That's just over $2 US per month and you also get four months completely free. Now go to my link in the description and get 83% off private internet access and four months completely free. Now, back to the video. Now, to give you some insight into my university experience in general, they would have ecumenical prayer services at chapel, and I attended a few of the just the regular chapel services, but there was always a sense of like new age, you know, I don't know. It was just really weird. Another story was from my stats class. One time, my stats professor, he'd always open up with some kind of practical stat that we could all do together. And he was talking on this particular day about overpopulation. And we were like, okay, interesting overpopulation. Me, you know, my homeschooled self, I already know this is a myth. Like, I, there's no way uh, overpopulation is this thing. These people have not been to, you know, outside of their big city, obviously. But that's fine. You know, okay. But he said, you know, if it was me, uh, you know, and I was your guys' age, I probably wouldn't have kids. Meanwhile, his son is in the back row and he's like, mm -hmm, yep, yep, it's true. I already know this. I'm like, bro, your dad wouldn't have had you? Like, that's kind of messed up. And it just goes to show what kind of these lies do to people's brains where they're like, yeah, I wish I didn't have my son because it's overpopulation. It's hurting the earth. 
Like, bro, what do you value the earth or your son? Like, what is going on? It's what happens when you untether yourself from the truth of scripture. But one of the overarching themes that I saw, and it broke my heart, is that progressive theology, it puts a burden on people. This is what people don't understand. They think progressive Christianity, it's this kind of light freeing thing. It gets you out of the bondage of this kind of structured, um, you know, constraining conservative perspective of and literal reading of the Bible. Like, as long as you can be more whimsical with it and it's just kind of all poetry and some stuff we, we take in and some stuff is just kind of culturally not relevant anymore. And we, we believe some things, but other things it's just like, hey, we're going to take some and we're going to leave some. It's such a more freeing approach to the Bible. That's what people think. But to be honest, after witnessing uh, what was going on at the university and honestly the last few years, uh, it's not. It's burdensome. And the reason is, is salvation in woke culture or in progressive culture is to adhere to the tenets of progressivism or wokeism, to hold to the beliefs that, okay, climate change is real, that LGBTQ, AAI people are, um, you know, taking advantage of, we need to stand up for them. And that's actually even better than heteronormativity. And also that there's marginalized groups out there that, and we're the oppressors of them, even if you're not, you know, personally an oppressor, as long as you're born a certain skin color, then all of a sudden this means that you have a certain and status and 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 you got to believe every single piece of intersectionality if all of a sudden you're not keeping up with this woke ideology right as if as all of a sudden you're, you you kind of slip up a little bit uh, you are seen as evil as behind as backwards there's no forgiveness in this worldview because it's all work it's all about just trying to do more trying to appease the powers that be or the the mob mentality of this is what you need to believe the scary thing is is their morality is changing all the time so how do these people keep up the truth is they can't they can't and that's why it is so burdensome and i wanted to be like hey friend hey um y you don't have to be this way it doesn't have to be this way you don't have to just conform to whatever they tell you to believe or whatever you think is the cool, trendy, woke thing to believe. Actually, we have a firm foundation, a firm morality in the Bible that we can trust, that we can hold to. That's not backwards at all, but no, it is just. And when we look at what biblical theology actually teaches, it is freeing. Jesus said that he is the truth. And the truth will set you free. So we need to believe in Jesus and the true Jesus, not the hippie Jesus, not the woke Jesus, not the Jesus who simply went around um, affirming everyone because that Jesus didn't exist. People like to paint Jesus that way. But to be honest, he, he never did that to anybody. Think about the woman that was caught in adultery. Everyone's going to stone her. And he said, hey, if you, any of you have sinned, you haven't sinned, cast the first stone. Everybody leaves, right? And so everyone's like, oh yeah, okay. Jesus, you know, accepts and affirms everybody's lifestyle. But then he says, hey, go and sin no more. They, can, they can't condemn you and neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. And so this is a call to repentance. This is a, this is a different kind of Jesus that progressive Christians don't like to talk about. In these academic, woke, progressive environments, uncertainty is seen as a virtue. And even when it comes to Christianity, you talk to progressive Christians and you say, hey, are you certain of this? Or do you, you know, you're really sure about this? And they say, well, yeah, for, for the most part I am, but I guess I could be wrong. They see that as a humble stance, but ultimately what they're doing is they're valuing their own intellect, their own uh, beliefs over what God has said, over what he has already revealed and declared. It says, you know, God, I recognize that you've revealed yourself to me in a Bible that is consistent, that has been preserved over thousands of years, that has been verified by eyewitness claims of supernatural events. It's like, okay, I, I get that, God. But at the same time, uh, it could be wrong. Yeah, it, it might be. It might be. And I, I, you know what? I'm probably the perfect person to make that evaluation. You see how it's not pummel at all? It's actually kind of prideful. Okay, before I leave you, I want to tell you a little bit of a funny story. But it's not even funny. It's kind of more tra traumatic, if anything. You guys know how they have uh, like dog petting or some sort of activity at the university during exams to, I don't even know what it is like to calm the students. Maybe you've never seen this. Maybe, maybe this is just a Canadian thing. I don't think so. But they had like a dog petting circle. They brought all these puppies in. Everyone's petting these, you know, these dogs and it's so nice. Okay, exam season, you calm your anxiety. And they also were like, hey, we're going to have booster juice for everybody. 
I don't, I don't think booster juice is just a Canadian thing, but oh, they actually don't. It's a Canadian thing. Anyway, they juice a bunch of stuff and make drinks for you. Anyway, so they have all these booster juices that are waiting for people as soon as they get out of class. And I'm just like so excited. I'm so thirsty. I'm like, okay, booster juice, it's time. I've never had one. So I'm, I'm walking out of the, you know, through the crowd and it's just a mob. Everyone's trying to grab them. And I'm like, okay, this is great. Me and my, my friend, we're, we're trying to reach at them. And all of a sudden I'm looking there and the supply is dwindling and we're not, we're not as close to the booster juice as we should be. So now I'm getting a little bit antsy. I'm trying to maneuver my way through the crowd, pushing and shoving a little bit in good Christian love, of course. But then all of a sudden I'm reaching and I'm like, there's no booster juice. We didn't even get a booster juice. And I'm like, wow, my tuition, what was it for if I missed out on the booster juice? This is so sad. But overall, like I said, hey, I didn't regret my one year at Progressive Christian University. Would I recommend that you go? Hey, you got to make that determination for yourself. Honestly, I learned a lot more of what I don't believe than what I do believe. And it was the time I spent outside of class that I really honed into what I truly believe. It depends what you want to do. For what I'm doing now, it equipped me amazingly because I was ready to come to term, you know, come against what the world is, is teaching and what the distortions to Christianity are. Or maybe if you want to get a little bit more rigorous theological education or just education in general, you don't want to have to be constantly fighting against things that are just stupid and dumb and a waste of time. Then you probably want to go for something a little bit different. Okay, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos like this all the time. I love each and every one of you who watches my videos on a weekly basis. It's such an amazing blessing to be able to speak in your lives. Another huge blessing is people that support me on Patreon that enable me to equip people to follow Jesus daily. You guys know that this is my full-time gig. This is how I get my support and pay my rent and support my family and all that stuff. So if you want to support me in what I'm doing here and Patreon makes up a good chunk of that, click the link in my description. You can ask access to all sorts of other content and our video chats that we do or discord it's a fun place to be and it would be an amazing help to me um, until next time i will see you later god bless